podcast personal finance edition i'm olivia joined by my co-host rashmi today we're going to pivot from our past few episodes about taxes and see how they apply more directly where on a paycheck or pay stub or payroll whatever you want to call it right the thing that we get our income information on we all look forward to payday but what's the difference between a pay stub and a paycheck i mean they're essentially the same thing but they have a few minor differences A paycheck is the check made out to an employee for their pay based on salary and hours worked. Only around 4% of workers will still get paper paychecks. It's become outdated to get a physical check that you deposit to your bank account. Instead, most businesses pay employees with automated payroll platforms. I get a payroll, which is essentially just a way of paying employees, so businesses will run the payroll and calculate and distribute wages with everyone on the payroll, being all the employees needing to be paid with all their information. A payroll expense is the amount that a firm spends on employee wages and taxes, and there's lots of important terms on your payroll, but before we get into that, let's define a pay stub. Okay, so a pay stub is quite similar to a payroll, which summarizes all the amounts contained within the paycheck. Roughly 82% of employees use online portals to access pay stubs. It has all of your up-to-date information along your pay information. So let's define the key terms of a payroll or pay stub before we discuss what's most important to note. Pay frequency is the recurring length of time that is how often employees are paid. Usually it's either weekly, bi-weekly, or monthly. But I think the most I've ever like the most common I've seen is probably bi-weekly. Mm-hmm. The pay period defines the specific date range for that pay stub. And the rate is obviously your wage per hour, and hours are the amount of hours you've worked within that pay period. Both pre-tax and post-tax deductions will appear on this document. Pre-tax deductions are the amount withheld from wages before calculating some or all taxes. Common pre-tax deductions are health insurance and some retirement plans like a Roth IRA or 401k. These deductions reduce an employee's taxable income, meaning you end up owing less income tax. Post-tax deductions are taken from an employee's net salary and do not reduce taxable income. Common post-tax deductions include certain insurance premiums and some charitable donations. Pre-tax deductions benefit both employers and employees since employers have to pay part of their employees' share of Medicare and Social Security taxes, if you didn't know. When an employee uses a pre-tax deduction, they lower both their own taxes and their employer's taxes as well. It's a win-win situation. On your pay stub, you will always see deductions for FICA and MEDI, the Federal Insurance Contributions Act and Medicare. This is deducted from every paycheck, from your first to your last. Paying FICA provides social security for others and gives you credit to receive and access um, it when you retire. The social security tax is 6.2% and the Medicare tax is 1.45. A pay stub is a brief way of providing information about where your money is going, so there are lots of abbreviations used on one. For example... FICA and MEDI, as we just mentioned, are short for the Social Security and Medicare taxes. Pre-tax health plans like flexible spending accounts and health savings accounts will show up as FSAs and HSAs. These accounts let employees save pre-tax money for qualified medical expenses, and dependent care benefits will also show up as DCAPs, which allow pre-tax dollars to be used on care expenses for dependents like child care and after-school programs. For post-tax deductions, Roth 401k contributions will show up as R401. Employer-sponsored pension plans as ESPP, insurances as INS, and student loans spelled as STDNT loan. Payroll tax deductions like federal and state withholding taxes will show up as FWT and SWT, respectively. The specific deductions will depend on your situation, what your employee offers, and what you qualify for. It's just important to understand that these abbreviations are things that you've probably elected to get deductions for or are forced to or have to based on government required taxes. But moving on to your actual pay, gross pay is the total amount of pay before any taxes or deductions are taken out. Taxable pay is all the income you have left to be taxed after they're taken out, and net pay is the take-home pay after all of your deductions and taxes have been taken out. Think of it like this. 
Gross pay is everything you've earned. Then you throw out a net over your income and it catches what you're eligible to tax home, your net pay. Anything you don't catch is taken through deductions and taxes. And if you see on your paycheck, it will show you both values and there's usually a huge gap. So don't be alarmed when you see your, your number go by down by like $50. Yeah. And usually you'll see, like Rashmi said, your current and year to date pay for each part of the pay stub. So current is your pay period in question and year to date counts up everything so far in that one year. Now on a usual pay stub, the top rows will have all your employee information, probably your address, employee number, filing status for federal and state, the pay period, etc. And underneath that on the left side will be gross earnings, which includes your gross earnings and hours. To the right of that, there will be deductions and underneath on the right side will be a summary that states your final net pay. Now, all of this can be difficult to visualize, so we recommend looking at some examples online so that you can understand what's happening on your first payroll. Maybe listen to this podcast again, but this time have like an actual stub to the side of it, so it might be easier to follow along. Now, for when you do start re- receiving pay stubs, always make sure that they're accurately reporting your pay within that pay period, since they can be used as evidence about your pay. If you have any issues with what is displayed, bring it up to your employees, employers. <laughs> Thanks for tuning in to today's quick episode about pay stubs. With that in mind, you'll be a superstar at reading your pay information. Next episode, we'll take a look at getting your first job. This is Olivia and Roshmi. Cash out.